Welcome to Chapter 23, Part B. We're going to talk about encoding a Turing machine and the language Allen. So encoding a Turing machine means taking one of these Turing machines and converting it into a string that represents it. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, we'd want to use that string as input into another Turing machine so that that Turing machine can maybe answer questions about other Turing machines. Like, for example, does this Turing machine accept the null word? Yes or no? Or does this Turing machine accept an infinite number of words? And there's lots of other questions that we might have about Turing machines. So what we want to do is create Turing machines that can answer questions about other Turing machines. And in order to put, we can't just put this diagram in as input onto a Turing machine. We have to convert it to a string somehow. So I haven't really talked a lot about this in our video lectures, but the book has noted that for every Turing machine or finite automata that you can really write it down in table format, where you say, from if you're in state one and you uh, read a B, and then you go to state one and write a B and move the tape head to the right. So you could basically take every edge and write a row in this table right here that represents what that edge will do. And we're going to use that to encode this tree machine. A couple of rules we're going to have the start state always be state one and the halt state always be state two. And then we'll just number all the rest of the states. And there's only one in this case, uh, three, four, five, and so on. And it's okay that we only have one halt state because after we halt, the machine quits. So if we have two halt states in the actual Turing machine, we could just have them go to state two because that means we accept the word. So you can see down here, I've written out one row in this table for each edge that we have in this Turing machine. Now what we need to do is code it up. If you notice, there's the from is a one, so we're just gonna let the number of A's uh, match the, the state that we're in. So since that's a one and we're from state one, we'll just have one A. Now in this case, if we're in state three, then that would be three A's, so we'll write out three A's that way. And then we'll use the letter B as a little separator. Then we'll go ahead and encode up the two. If we're uh, going to state one, then we just use one A for that. And in this case, down here, we're going to state three, so we'd use three A's for that. And so now you can see if we're in state three, then we go to state two. Now the characters that we read and write on our uh, tape head we can uh, come up with some sort of code, much like an ASCII code or something. If we're reading the character A, we can use two A's for that. If we're reading the character B, we can use A, B for that. So whatever we're reading, we'll just uh, look it up in this table and produce the right code for that. So we'll also use the same code for when we're writing. So you could see if I'm reading an A, a B, then, then we get AB from what we're reading, and we're going to write a B too. So we put AB in for what we're writing. So I went ahead and filled out the rest of this. Now we don't need this little separator in between it because we know that each character will just be two letters on our tape. Now finally, we need to know whether we move our tape head to the right or to the left. So if we're going to move it right, we write an A. And if we're going to move it to the left, we write a B. So in this case, we're going to move it to the right. So we'll write an A right there and an A right here. And in these two cases, we're going to move it to the left. So we'll put a B on the end right there. So now we have one string of A's and B's that represent one row in this table. Then to come up with the code for this entire Turing machine, all we need to do is just list out each row one right after another. And then we have the code for one of these Turing machines. And there's lots of other ways we can do it. You don't have to do it this way. You, there's, you can use your imagination and come up with your own way to code up a Turing machine, just as long as you can reproduce the table. And from the table, you can reproduce the original machine. You have a valid code for that Turing machine. So now that we have valid codes for Turing machines, we can create other Turing machines or new Turing machines that will take in as input these code words 
and then they'll do certain things and they can analyze the Turing machine and maybe answer questions about what that Turing machine does. So now we're going to talk about a very important language called Allen. To understand Allen, first we need to understand what a code word language is. So a code word is basically a coded up Turing machine. So it's all words that can represent a Turing machine. Now, we're specifically, we're talking about the way that we that I just coded up a Turing machine, but it can be any sort of word that represents a real Turing machine. And then we get to Allen. And Allen is all code words that are not accepted by the Turing machine they represent and all non-code words. So in other words, it's all the words that don't represent a Turing machine because say they don't follow the right format or there's an edge that X is a halt state or anything like that. So anything that just doesn't code up a real Turing machine. That is in the language Allen. And what else is, if it does code up a real Turing machine, when we put that code word on the Turing machine, it the Turing machine will not represent that. So I know that's kind of a little confusing, so let's kind of do some examples. So here's a pretty simple um, Turing machine. It accepts all words that start with the letter B. So when it uh, when we do this, if we're in state one and we're reading a B, then we go to state two, write a B, and move the tape to the right. And here is the code word for this Turing machine. Since it only has one edge, we only have one uh, row in our table to code up. Now, if we run this Turing machine, with this as our input, you can see that it's going to crash because we're in state run and we're reading an A. Our tape head is pointing right there and there's no edge to follow. So it crashes. So this is a code word that represents a real Turing machine. And when we fit it on as input into this Turing machine, then it is going to crash. So this code word is in the language Allen. So what that means is it's not accepted by the Turing machine that it represents. So this represents this Turing machine. And when we run this Turing machine with that as its input, it crashes. Now let's try this other pretty simple Turing machine. In this case, it accepts all words that begin with an A. So we go ahead and code up this Turing machine and here's the code word. And now if we feed this in as input onto that Turing machine, we'll go to state number two. And remember state number two is the halt state. So we'll halt and accept the word. So this code word does represent a Turing machine, but when we run this Turing machine with this as our input, it accepts it. So this is not in the language Allen. This one causes this machine to crash. So it is in the language Allen. Now there are probably a lot of code words that fall into the language Allen. For example, let's take the Turing machine that accepts the language palindrome. Now it's most likely that its code word is not a palindrome. So its code word would not be accepted by the Turing machine it represents. So therefore it will not be in the, or it will be in the language Allen because the language Allen is all code words not accepted by the Turing machine that they represent. Okay, now let's say that you're gonna work really hard and you're gonna come up with a Turing machine that accepts the language Allen. And I know this is kind of a weird language, but just follow through with this, okay? So you work really hard and you create this Turing machine, you call it ATM for Allen Turing Machine, and it accepts the language Allen. Now let's say that your buddy says, you know what, it'd be nice to code up your Turing machine. So he creates a code word of your Turing machine that accepts the language Allen. And of course, the next step is to run that code word on your Turing machine. So what's going to happen? Let's say that your Turing machine accepts the code word. When it accepts the code word, if, every, if everything in this machine works rightly, if your Turing machine accepts the code word, that means your code word should not be accepted by the Turing machine that it represents, but it just was accepted by the Turing machine that you represented. 
So maybe that's okay. Maybe your Turing machine should reject it. So if your Turing machine rejects its own code word, by rejecting it, it's saying that it's not an Allen. But it happens to be a valid code word that was rejected by its own Turing machine, so it should be an Allen. So this leads to a contradiction. So let me explain this contradiction one more time. You created a Turing machine that accepts all the words in Allen. It was coded up, and now you're running your Turing machine on its own code word. If it accepts its code word, that means its code word, it cannot be an Allen, but it just accepted it saying that it is. Now let's say that your Turing machine rejects its own code word. That means that it's not an Allen, it just rejected it. But it was rejected by its own Turing machine, so it should be an Allen. So it can't accept it because then it should reject it. It can't reject it because then it should accept it. And that means that this Turing machine cannot be built. Now, I highly recommend you read page 551 in your book where it explains this argument. Now, since we cannot build this Turing machine, we now have our first language that cannot be accepted by a Turing machine. And it's actually going to be used as a basis to show that there are limitations to what Turing machines can do. And since we can't figure out a way to make a better Turing machine, these limitations also apply to our computers and our programming languages today. There are problems that cannot be solved because if we solve them, that means that we could create a Turing machine that accepts the language Allen, which we know leads to a contradiction and just cannot happen. So this is the theoretical limit of what Turing machines can do. And by a relation that computers represent a physical Turing machine in our world, that's the limitation. Even if they had an infinite amount of memory and we had an infinite amount of time to do something, there are just certain problems that cannot be solved.